We are just three days away from Super Bowl Sunday. Are you excited yet? According to Wikipedia, the free online encyclopedia, last year's Super Bowl became the most watched U.S. television event in history, drawing an average audience of 111 million viewers. This year, one more. This year's matchup will have the New York Giants face the New England Patriots in this exciting matchup to see who will become champions. Enough about the game. Let's talk about the real reason for this event. To air some of the best commercials in commercial history. Commercials that cost as much as $3.5 million to air. The most expensive one sold for over $4 million. Today I'm going to review some of last year's ads, follow that up by some of the most famous ads in Super Bowl history, and give you a sneak preview of what's to come this year. I've compiled these lists after spending countless hours at these websites, and uh, enough of that. Next slide. <laughs> so buckle up your seatbelt and uh, get ready for the ride. Last year's commercials. Next, Big Daddy silent silent dog si dog sitter ad, where a young man trains a house full of dogs to host a house party for him. Betty White's dominating game of tackle football for Snickers. The young Darth Vader trying his best to use the Force on his Volt father's Volkswagen Passat. The Wedding Crashers Big Day Wedding commercial, and the cute talking cars from cars.com. Who can remember these all-time favorites that truly inspired us? E-Trade's Babies ad. We're talking babies use a webcam to advertise their investments to demonstrate how easy it is to do. You can do it, the baby said, just before spitting up <laughs> on the keyboard. FedEx's Desert Island ad, where the castaway delivers a long overdue unopened package after coming back to civilization. And if you recall what was in the package, it, there was a GPS satellite telephone. EDS's Cat and Herders commercial, where a group of cowpokes take to the plains to herd hundreds of scattered felines. Reebok's office linebacker ad, where Terry Tate absolutely leveled the office worker who didn't make the coffee. Pepsi's homework. Pepsi's new can ad, where two kids oogle a young Cindy Crawford as she takes a sultry Pepsi break on a summer day. Monster.com's When I Grow Up ad, where a series of doe-eyed kids discuss shattered dreams that await for them in the workplace. Coke's Mean Joe Green ad, where a precocious kid offers Joe a drink after the game. In return, Joe throws the kid his game-worn jersey as repayment. But separated at birth ad, where two Dalmatian puppies are forced apart at birth, meet each other later in life. Apple's 1984 ad, where a female athlete hurls a sledgehammer against a big brother figure on a large movie screen in an, in an attempt to suggest that revolution was in the air. Just as Apple introduces Macintosh computer owners. McDonald's, this showdown ad where Larry Bird and Michael Jordan play an impulsive game of horse for McDonald's Big Man. Budweiser's 9-11 tribute ad where the Clydesdales journey to the Hudson River to bow down in defense to a city that had been struck by terrorist attacks months earlier. This year's lineup proves to be better than ever. According to Advertising Age, over 35 advertisers have created time for their ads. Let's start with one of the biggest investors, Anheuser-Busch. AV, as they are known in the industry, has purchased four and a half minutes of time and will run six ads in total. They will be touting their Bud Light, Platinum, Bud Light, and their flagship Budweiser beer. The next biggest ad is General Motors with five spots. GM will out, add three ads for Chevrolet and one for Cadillac. The Chevy ads will show up the Camaro, the Silverado, and the Sonic. 
Any Twilight or Vampire's Day Diary fans out there? Audio of America has produced one 60-second spot where a late arrival to a vampire campfire shows off its bright headlights that could kill vampires. This ad is posted online. Harris Mueller is back. This time he calls into work sick and is seen driving around town sorry, in a sporty red CRV. The catch line is, how can I handle work on a day like today? Don't you just love that theme song? <laughs> Kia Motors follows suit with one 60 second spot. An extreme green sequence ensues after the CNN accidentally spills a whole bag of pixie dust into the husband's eyes while he's sleeping. Victoria's Secret model Adriana Lima stars in this spot. Kia's premiering the commercial today on YouTube and in movie theaters near you. Toyota is back after a three year absence. Two 30-second spots featuring a much redesigned Toyota Camry is on the theme of reinvention with much added humor. This ad is viewable online as well. PepsiCo will run two 30-second commercials and possibly a 45-second spot for Pepsi Max. One spot will feature the winner of Pepsi's of uh, Fox's X Factor film. In a twist in Super Bowl marketing, Coca-Cola prepared two versions. Yep, of a 60 second ad. Slated to run during the second quarter. They won't decide though, however, which ad to run until they determine which team is winning at that time. GoDaddy.com has purchased two spots. The first spot will feature veteran GoDaddy girl and race car driver Danica Patrick and a reformed version of the Pussycat Dolls. Your second spot will feature Miss Patrick and fitness guru Jillian Michaels putting the finishing touches on a hot model in body paint. Both ads were hosted on their website. Honestly, guys, can they have oriented marketing it any better than this? I think not. Few ladies, David Beckham will be sporting H&M's new bodywear clothing line. Beckham's collection features boxers, t-shirts, tanks, and pajama bottoms are available online in his stores today. This, I, this ad is online now at hm.com slash us. But please, don't leave the room until the meeting is over. Frito-Lay is allowing their fans to decide which Doritos ad to run by letting you pick your favorite at CrashTheSuperBowl.com. A lucky one winner will receive a check for ten thousand dollars. Super Bowl Forty Six has already set a record for the price of Super Bowl advertising, selling fifty-eight spots for the game, generating a record seventy-five million dollars of revenue for NBC. So, what will you be watching on Super Bowl Sunday? The game, the halftime show, or the commercials? I say, grab your snacks and beverages and let the advertising begin. One more. <laughs> Mr. Toastmaster. <laughs>